Hi, I'm Nick Rounds from Leica Camera Australia. You might wonder why I'm wearing a jacket for this video. That's because there's something very special coming up that I want to talk to you about. And if you were looking closely in that opening sequence, you might have a pretty good clue as to what that might be. First of all, M11P. All of our M cameras have a P variant and this one is no different. So what is the difference between this one and the M11? Well, let's just have a look at the camera. The first thing you'll notice, of course, is this lovely engraving on the top plate. And being a P model, there's no red spot on the front of the camera. It has this wonderful black stealth look to it, which I find extremely attractive. On top of that, the, the finish here is a kind of semi-matte black, but it's of a, a design that doesn't take fingerprints. Some of the older shiny black models used to look quite fingerprinty, if that's a word. But this one just seems to resist fingerprints beautifully, so it always stays looking nice and clean. On the back of the camera, we have a new sapphire screen. Now, sapphire apparently is only slightly less hard than diamond, so it's unbelievably scratch resistant, which keeps it all looking in beautiful condition. So combine that with the paint finish and the hard screen, you have a camera which will look good for many, many, many years. And internally, there's 256 gigabytes of memory, which is good for about 3000 raw pictures. So you can shoot for an awfully long time without ever having to run out of capacity. So what's this new feature that I've got dressed up to tell you about? Well, the Content Authenticity Initiative is something that was set up by some major industry players back in 2019. And it's something that Leica has signed up to. It's about an initiative to support the authenticity of images. So it's not something that would protect you against a copyright breach, you know, somebody using your picture without your permission. But what if you could add a digital watermark to your picture in such a way that it can't be replicated? And if I just turn the camera on, let's bring up the menus and on page number five, you should see Leica content credentials and it's turned on. So if I just open up that menu, you'll see sign content is on and this will digitally, securely and in an encrypted fashion sign each image that's taken by this camera. And we'll come to why that's important later. Then I can put my copyright information in it and also created by. This information is locked into this file in a way that can't be duplicated. So what have we achieved with this? Well, it's about supporting, let's say, the trustworthiness of reporting documentary work by our photographers out there in the world witnessing real events. So if a photojournalist is using this system, they can have their image displayed in such a way that a viewer can track back that manifest to the original capture. And that original capture and that manifest includes a thumbnail generated by the camera at the time of taking the photograph, which is guaranteed to be intact because that manifest is itself intact. Now, if the manifest is not there, if it's been deleted or something, that doesn't tell you anything. But if the manifest is there, then you can know with absolute certainty that that original capture was as the photographer saw it at the time of capture. Now let's just have a look at what that looks like. So let me just open a photograph taken with this camera in Photoshop. This image I'm going to make a very basic adjustment to. I'll just make it black and white. Then I'm going to export it. And then we'll examine that export in the Verify tool and you'll see the manifest in action. Now, if the content credentials aren't enabled in Photoshop, you need to do that. So there's the dialog box here. It's already enabled in my case. And if I click preview, this gives me the information I need to confirm that there is in fact a manifest embedded in this file because it says here, this asset has attribution and history data. That's the key thing. So it's already got a manifest embedded in the file, the one generated by the camera. Let me just close that and I'll just shut that down. And I'm just going to do a very quick adjustment to desaturate it just so we can tell the two different pictures apart. Then I'm going to export that new version, export as, Make it a bit smaller just for the sakes of demonstration. 2048 pixels on the long edge. Now it's very important that you check down here content credentials attached to file. That's key. Then export that. I'm going to plonk it on my desktop. Save. And then I'm going to come out to Chrome. Just close Photoshop down. 
there is Chrome. This is the Verify tool using uh, the Chrome browser, which apparently is the recommended one. I can either drag and drop or I can select a file from my device. Let's do that. There's the file there. Open that. And here we are. This is the new version, the black and white version. And you'll see on the right hand side, produced by Nick Range, process Adobe Photoshop 25, actions, color or exposure edits. I did a color edit. And the ingredients, you can just see the little, the little color thumbnail down here, signed by Like Account AG with the little CR logo on it. Um, and then if I click backwards in time, if you like, the previous step, now it shows me, produced by Nick Rains, M11P, capture date based on the camera's time and setting. Then it was captured on an M11P, Super Elmar, 20,000 ISO, not bad, 18 millimeter and 80th of a second content credential like a camera AG. So anybody seeing this picture, the bigger, the, the black and white one, can track it back to see that it was originally a color capture, but nothing has fundamentally changed. So they can therefore trust that that picture was as it was seen by me at the time I shot it. And then I've made a perfectly legitimate change to that picture. So this has far reaching effects in the trustworthiness of your images. I'll leave the last word to documentary photographer Russell Shakespeare, who's been working with the M11P for the last couple of weeks in India. Here's what he had to say about how this new feature will affect his work. As a documentary photographer and witness to events that happen out there in the world, having the, the digital authenticity certificate is incredibly important. The fact that I know that it's embedded in this file means that when I send this picture to the uh, editor for publication, I know that they can look at the file and see that digital authenticity certificate and know that the events that happened in front of me are exactly as I saw them.